Hello, savvy folks. Welcome to another episode on Modern World Dynamics. Today, we're going to tackle a topic that's both intriguing and incredibly useful. The art and science of understanding credit cards and credit scores. We'll be sharing some intriguing stories, helpful examples, and even a joke or two to keep things light. So, whether you're a curious novice or a seasoned pro, there's something for everyone. So, buckle up as we delve into the fascinating world of credit cards and credit scores. Now imagine you're in a shop. Your eyes catch a stunning piece of furniture, but alas, you're a bit short on cash. This is where the concept of a credit card comes into play. Picture it as your financial sidekick, ready to step in when you need that extra bit of financial muscle. But remember, with every superhero, there's a caveat. Let's dive into the story of Bob. Bob spots a mid-century modern sofa that would perfectly complement his living room. Unfortunately, he's a couple of hundred pounds short. Enter his trusty credit card, swooping in to cover the difference. Bob is ecstatic. He's able to take the sofa home and enjoy it immediately. However, here's where we need to understand the true nature of a credit card. It's not a magical tool that manifests money out of thin air. No, it's more akin to a short-term loan. Bob's credit card provider has essentially lent him the money to buy the sofa. Now, Bob has a certain period, usually about a month, to pay back this loan. If Bob pays back the amount within this period, he won't incur any interest. It's as if he's borrowed money from a friend who's content not to charge interest, as long as he gets his money back on time. But if Bob doesn't pay back the amount within this period, he'll start accruing interest. And let me tell you, credit card interest rates can be pretty steep, often more than 20% annually. So, while Bob has enjoyed the immediate gratification of owning the sofa, he's also taken on a financial commitment. He needs to repay the credit card provider within the stipulated time to avoid paying extra in the form of interest. Therefore, while a credit card may rescue you from immediate cash crunches, remember it's not a magic money tree. It's a tool that, when used responsibly, can provide convenience and financial flexibility. But misuse it, and it can become a costly trap. So use your credit card wisely, just like our friend Bob. Now, moving on to a term that often leaves people scratching their heads, credit scores. Imagine you're playing a video game. You're the hero of the game, and your objective is to amass points. The more points you collect, the higher your score. At the end of the game, the player with the highest score emerges victorious. Similarly, in the real world of finance, we have a game running, and that's called the credit score game. A credit score is a three-digit number that tells lenders how trustworthy you are. It's like your financial reputation. It's calculated based on your credit history, how you've managed your debts and paid your bills. The higher your credit score, the more likely you are to be approved for loans or credit cards at favorable terms. Let's delve deeper into this. Picture your credit score as a report card for your financial behavior. It's not about how much money you have in the bank, but how well you manage your financial obligations. It's about paying your bills on time, not maxing out your credit cards, and not having a lot of debt. Just like in a video game where you need to strategize and plan to score points, managing your credit score also requires a strategy. You have to ensure you're not spending more than you can afford, paying your bills on time, and not taking on unnecessary debt. Now, why is this score so important? Well, it's what lenders, landlords, and sometimes even employers look at to determine if they can trust you financially. A high credit score can be the key to getting that loan you need for a new home, a car, or even a business. On the other hand, a low credit score can make it harder for you to get credit and may lead to higher interest rates. So just like in our video game analogy, scoring high is the goal. And remember, the best way to score high in the credit game is by playing responsibly and smartly. So a high credit score is like a high game score. It makes you a winner in the world of finance. A reminder, folks, if you're enjoying the video, do hit the subscribe button. Your support helps us to keep bringing you more content like this. Now let's delve into the fascinating symbiotic relationship between credit cards and credit scores. Picture this. Credit cards and credit scores are like two peas in a pod. They go hand in hand and one directly impacts the other. Think of your credit card as a powerful tool, a magic wand, if you will 
that can either conjure up a glorious credit score or, if misused, summon a credit score monster that can haunt your financial dreams. Responsible use of credit cards is the secret ingredient to the potion of an impressive credit score. This means paying off your balances on time, keeping your credit utilization low, and not applying for new credit too often. Each of these actions sends positive signals to the credit bureaus, leading to a better credit score. But don't be fooled, it's a double-edged sword. Irresponsible use such as late payments or high credit utilization can negatively impact your credit score. It's like feeding your pet gremlins after midnight you're asking for trouble. So the key to a happy credit life is a responsible credit card usage. It's a symbiotic relationship where both parties benefit. Your credit card company gets a responsible client and you get a glowing credit score. It's a win-win situation like having your cake and eating it too. And who doesn't like cake? Now that you're well-versed with credit cards and credit scores, let's talk strategy. First off, let's tackle the elephant in the room, paying your bills on time. It might seem like a no-brainer, but you'll be surprised at how many people overlook this simple rule. Every late payment is a notch down on your credit score, so make sure you're always on the ball with your bills. Next up, keep your credit card balance low. Your credit utilization ratio, which is the percentage of your available credit that you're using, plays a significant role in your credit score. Aim to keep this ratio below 30%, so if your credit limit is £1,000, try not to owe more than 300 at a time. Another trick in the book is to diversify your credit. Having different types of credit, like a credit card, a car loan, or a mortgage, can actually boost your credit score. It shows lenders that you can handle different types of credit responsibly. Lastly, don't close old credit card accounts unless necessary. The age of your credit accounts contributes to your credit score, and older accounts can help increase your score. Remember, a good credit score is not a one-time achievement, but a result of consistent financial discipline. So, keep these tips in mind, and you'll be on your way to a stellar credit score in no time. Well, that's all for today, folks. We've had a splendid journey, haven't we? We've demystified credit cards, understood credit scores, and even discovered their symbiotic relationship. We've also shared some clever tips and tricks to boost your credit score. Now, if you found this enlightening, consider making a donation to support us in creating more such informative content. The link is in the description. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button. Until next time, this is Modern World Dynamics signing off.